So I, I like that. I mean, that that's good. But mainly, I talked to the Lord t tonight. I looked up at the firmament, and I cried out to God. I said, Lord, please heal me. I really messed up. I need help. And that's what I did today. And the reason I've said the F word and whatever other kind of word, the S word, the F word, whatever, is because I've been, I've clashed with a religious spirit. And so I feel like a need to, to, to use expletives as a result of that. I'm, I'm not married, I'm very conscious of them as a literary person, you know, and and their efficacy. I'm also aware that there's a danger of, of, of well, there's no danger in being too spiritual here, that wrecking a spiritual experience. Uh, no, not at all. There's no danger. When you're truly spiritual, words like that don't occur to you. Well, obviously, I'm not very spiritual right now. And, uh, you know, but I did cry out to God for help. I really need help. Because I, I can't take the, the, the blowback from 20 on 20 and these daily podcasts anymore. I mean, I cannot handle it. I can't handle it. I physically can't handle it. And, you know, I know that uh, people out there, they may not think that this kind of thing goes on. It does go on. And there are, um, you know, we would call it witchcraft or whatever, but uh, it could just be bad vibes. There is, the, you know, there, there, are, there, there is that. It's a very risky thing to do to, to be dealing with truth. You know, in, in whatever measure you can. But I mean, dealing with it, it's not the same thing as posting Facebook posts. And not the same thing at all. It's, it's a, when you, when you, you know, that's, Facebook is not public. I don't know if you, even if you are public with your post, it, it's your, your things you post will never get out to the public. So I hope you understand that. You're posting for your friends and that's it. You're not changing the world. Twitter's a little better. YouTube, YouTube not because if you're really on the truth, they're going to cut your views. And uh, if you're if you're just uh, you know they like if you if you're not a threat in any way, they'll they'll boost your views. Uh, you know, trying to balance things out, you know, toward the lie. There's only one lie here in the world. Uh, people that are. TIs, okay, I've been dealing with this the last 24 hours, really contemplating the multidimensionality of it. And, and, and when people change and they come at you and then they're not the same as who they were, you know, I'm sorry, that, that's a real low blow. That, there's a technology involved in that. It's almost like we're in a, in a simulated situation called life, but it's a simulation. And, you, you know... Just look at it as, as a test. And they, um, when they switch like that, you can usually tell because there'll be an errant word, there'll be something that will be like a double entendre that they'll say. And they'll, they'll tell you exactly if they're friend or foe in that opening couple of sentences. And if you listen for it, you'll hear it. And if you hear it, you gotta politely, now really politely, oh, I've got a dental appointment. Oh, I have a, you know, and and excuse yourself in a in a in a way as not to cause any alarm. Like you you haven't figured it. In other words, not telegraphing that you figured it out. You know, once you detect a setup. Now I have setups where, you know, come to the meeting or come to the thing, and you know, it it it, it can be anything from uh, putting poison in your food to uh, just going ahead and uh, you know murdering you and having the uh, you know the uh, the guys with the blue hats come take you away. Uh you know, oh, missing person. I don't know what, I'm supposed to be here for lunch, but who knew, you know, and, and, you know, those kind of things. You gotta be very careful out there when you, if you're truly on the cutting edge, if truly on the razor's edge of the path of Jesus. Now, Jesus is the great mystery. Jesus Christ is a great mystery. And those who have faith in Jesus Christ and in this mystery get the, you know, the, the one benefit is that you have, there's power there, obviously. More power than any, anything on earth. And there's, there's a path there. There's a way. The problem is, is that the other side detects those who are on the, but you could be very quietly on the path and you will be detected, i.e. targeted. So targeting comes from the spiritual realm and manifest in the physical. 
it comes from the physical, you know, like you're, you're the, just, uh, you know, the wrong person, wrong political affiliation, whatever. It comes from that, but it's also still a spiritual war. It can be, a, you know, any, any cause or, if, you know, you could be targeted because uh, they just decide that, you know, you're, you, you fit the profile of what someone they want to target, so they do. And it, it could be, you'll never, you know, regardless of that, you'll never find out why you were targeted. You're just going to realize you were targeted. And the main feature of being targeted is people changing. And this is what you have to look out for. Not being who they were. If you detect something like that, like they're acting like who they were, but they're not really the same people, even if that doesn't make sense to you, even if there's no logic that you can apply to that, uh, you have to take heed and and be sensitive to to what's happening, so that you can so you can exit in one piece. Because the minute they know there's alarm there, then you know they start scrambling because they set up this this trap. Usually, it's a trap where you're invited somewhere, and it'll be something you, that you're interested in, like you might be interested in. Uh, movie making or may, maybe a, you know doing a record or investing in a record company or you know I'm just saying some things that that, that might, they might think appeal to me or, or uh, something to do with a, a sport or some kind of thing or an investment I mean, what, it could be any any excuse but uh, you know a, you, you have to be able to detect if it's a setup or not now it can also be the same thing of you decide to move into a certain apartment you know, a certain place, whatever. And it's all kind of pre-wired, you know, like it's waiting for you. And that's the thing about the, 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 this battle that we're in. It's, it, it's extemporary, it's outside of time, okay? And it's outside of our space. That's, it's coming from this other place, not like some meeting room that they all have, it. it's coming from another, like what we might call a supernatural place. And therefore, the only way you can really fight it all, including having the discernment to come or go or leave or stay, usually it's leave. Okay, leave. Always leave. But then you have to kind of sometimes play the game where, you know, you act like nothing's, even though you know something's really wrong, you act like everything's okay until you can find an exit. When you feel like you need an exit, you do. That's your inner gut. That's your survival mechanism within you telling you you need to get yourself out of there. I've been in a lot of situations like that where it's very deadly, okay? Very deadly. And through the miracle of God, you know, I, I got through. But that doesn't mean tempt the Lord by dangling yourself in front of them. That means have the discernment to know when it's okay and when it's not. The people that you trust right now, you may not be able to trust two days from now, because they may not be the same people. I know that's hard to accept, but I, I, I promise you it's something like that if it isn't that exactly. And uh, it's really mind-blowing and it's really frightening. And things like that is what gets people, you know, when people start milling about and, and coming at you in some way, you know what I mean? And they're just unrelated people. Uh, some mechanism is working outside of time and space to affect that, including dimensional work, which then can make people appear to be the same, but they're, it's almost like you're in a parallel universe where they're not the same people, but they're the antithesis of the nice person you knew. It can also happen in relationships, male, female, etc., etc. It can happen, um, it's like you wake up, you go, I don't know you, you know? <laughs> Now, now I know you, but I thought I didn't know you, but now I know you again. And, you know, you realize you can trust no one. You cannot trust a, another human being. Uh, you, can, you, can, um, you, can, you can verify and go along further with confidence that you've verified it, but you can't just give a blind blanket trust because people oscillate they become different <clears throat> than <clears throat> the one you trusted. So tomorrow's another day. So you have to re-verify. And then the next day is another day. You have to re-verify again. Now, you're not even supposed to be looking at this reality. You're not even supposed to have your head open to it. You know, God was supposed to veil that from people. Okay, that was, you come here, you, 
you buy into the leave it to beaver thing, the surface reality, you become a surface dweller of the earth. You don't see other dimensions, you don't see, but when you're, when you're pushed to the wall, you know what I mean? When you really, when you really pushed all the way, uh, as a, let's just say as a survival mechanism, sometimes that part of that usually veiled opens up so you could have the discernment to be able to get the heck out of there. To get out of there. And I, I don't disparage people that are having meetings and talking about psychotronic warfare and, you know, the newest satellite and ELF weapons and all that. That's all fine and good, but that's really got nothing to do with the, the, the real central issue here. It's all spiritual warfare. And, um, you know, it's like you fight it there in the spiritual realm. You're not going to be able to go and have all these. I've had, I know people have had meetings for 20, 30 years. They're not, they're, they have meetings and they, they keep on having, they're, they're not really getting anywhere. They're, they're very afflicted, you know, and they're, they're not getting relief. There's only, there's relief in, in, you know, fellow victims, I suppose, but then you can't trust that they're the same people next week either. So you really are on your own. I mean, I'm sorry, but you really are on your own. There is no collective solution. There is no solution with people. Things are going to shift, you know, like one day people are like this, the next day it's like that. And one day you had a job that you felt you could be in that job forever. The next day you're like persona non grata, like, like you should already know you're fired. You know, it's like, well, where would I know that? I mean, and it's like, like you walked into a different universe where the, you have the opposite of where you just were the day before. That's spiritual warfare, okay? That kind of thing is, is not explainable in terrestrial terms. That's very, very indicative of a multidimensional attack and uh, where, where even your, your basic, where you thought you were and who you thought you knew is switched out so that now you're completely destabilized. You can't rely on anything now. Now, many people can't handle that and they, they just, uh, you know, me... I might as well stick it out because I've already got all these scars all over me and, you know, ticks and traumas and things that, you know, have pretty much shaped my, uh, my life, unfortunately. I, I, I could not just, you know, I didn't even, you know, so I might as well stick it out to the end, you know what I'm saying? You know, I've, I've already paid, so uh, we'll see where this goes. You know, I know there will be justice in the end. And I know that I will have, you know, my reputation back. I will have my <clears throat> restoration back. And in fact, I've already restored a lot of levels, but except for age, but I can't help that. But even that will be remedied. That, that will be restored as well. I will have those things and all those injustices or whatever that never got resolved they will be resolved. The, my, the work I got to do is, of course, letting it go. You know, it's easy to do when people are dead. You know what I mean? It's, it's no sense holding a grudge then, right? So that makes it a little bit easier. But I mean, you have to still go through like, yeah, I don't want to hold on to this. I don't want to hold on to that. You got to let this stuff go or it piles up. And earlier traumas that you didn't deal with because you couldn't, you didn't have the skill set. Uh, we, we still have to revisit those, not like Freud or anything, but in a sense of revisiting so that we can say, oh, okay, I see what happened there, and then letting the animus go, because the animus binds us to that negative stuff. And we can't keep that animus, that negative energy going because it just feeds on itself. It just becomes like a, 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 a swirling you know, vortex. It sucks us all into it, and, and so we, it's, it's very difficult you know, you don't care. You know, Yeshua beat it. Who cares, right? First tenet of spirituality 101. Yeshua beat it. Jesus beat it. He paid it all. I'm free. Who cares? You know, it's like everything that led up to this point, all those things, I need to let them go. I need to process them. I need to, but, but at the same time, you're still looking out ahead for that next thing. That next shoe is going to drop. So you're still not off the hook, right? And then if that next shoe drops and then you're traumatized and you delay, which causes a delay, PTSD is really, you could call it a delay. 
In other words, something happens to you and then you can't deal with it for two years and then you finally deal with it. You finally acknowledge something happened two years later. You couldn't deal with it at the time because you had to be cool, you know? You had to act like, you know, because you, you were scared of the people around there. You don't know what was going to happen. So you kind of like just ignored it kind of, you know, because it would really hurt you if you focused on it. So you kept going and now now you realize something's pulling you to, something has diseased you. You've got disease. And so it, it links back to that earlier trauma that went into your body, uh, obviously, because you didn't deal with it. So it got stuffed down in there and then it became a thing. There's a lot of us who have a lot of things like that piled up because we, from the first trauma, every, because everyone's traumatized to a certain extent. So from the first trauma, we learn not to deal with the traumas and then they pile up and then the next thing you know, you're dead. Because you couldn't look at, because you don't want to believe your fellow man could be that cruel to you. You don't want to believe there's an other world where things are not as they seem, where people are not who they say they are, not who you thought they were. On a daily basis, it's shifting. And, you, you know, and, and so some of these people that you think are the same person, some of the myriads of, of they're really people, not a person, uh, suddenly show up, suddenly they do something anomalous or they say something really cruel, and you just, you have to let that go because that's not in your experience of them, that cruelty. And so you become traumatized in that instant because you won't deal with it. And then there's a delay for about two years or so within unless they start pulling it again and again, and finally you go, oh my God, I got to deal with this. And then, you know, you go back through the history. People that uh, get the delay going, you know, the, 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 the sort of, uh, they get a delay going so they can, the reason is, is so they can stick, keep at their job. So they can cope with their job. They can cope with their life. They can cope with their families. You know what I mean? So they let stuff like that go. Unfortunately, they don't let it go like out of their system. What happens is it finds a, a place in them and then the next thing is a further delay and sometimes people get such a delay going that they actually don't deal with things for 30 years that's like my case 40 years you know because I, I I couldn't deal with that you know that 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 stalking and that bullying and that stuff I just didn't want to believe that people could be like that when I was a, like a teenager I didn't want so that all that got piled up back then and I had to deal with it later because I just still couldn't believe. Plus, there was a danger component that if I allowed myself to realize these people also murder people, if I realized that they murder people, you know, that, that you know, breaking the childhood illusion of friends and kids and playing and all that and being kids, right? And, you know, that they, that they now murder people, you know, if, who have any knowledge about anything. You know, if you have knowledge, you get targeted you, for murder, really. It's almost like what Satan wants, and I'll just call Satan the head of this 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 nightmare, this complete, you know, I mean, every horror movie to me is comedy, okay? Because nothing comes close to this experience of this life. Nothing. This is the best horror movie that ever was. This is the most terrifying, the most terrifying movie of all time is just literal reality. Most people, though, are kind of sleeping. And so... They never ever, they're dealing with um, fairy tales and rainbows and things. They have no idea. They have been traumatized. They remember bad, they don't ever want to go back there again, see? In other words, they want a delay that goes for the rest of their lives. There are those people, I've met them, primarily in churches. Ah. Uh, How to cope is this. I will tell you how to cope. I will teach you how to cope. Number one, you've got to get off by yourself where you can get your, gather your wits about you and just communicate with the Lord. Just reach out to him, talk to him, say, Father, I'm so confused. And say, well, what do you think about this? And then you answer, you know, you answer yourself. You say, well, what a, here's a question I have. And then what's that first answer that comes? You have to start piecing together what reality is for you. And then... The next step is, well, okay, so what are we going to do about it? It's really like we. You are really a we. I'm a we, okay? So what are we going to do about it? Well, obviously, there has to be some plan of action. You know, something has to happen to, to prevent us from being put into this sort of victim role where we can't get out. 
And, uh, it's, um, you know, I, 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 and it could take on any kind of form. Maybe, maybe you move to another state. Maybe, maybe there's, there's no physical movement whatsoever and none required, but there has to be a, a, a change in you. Like, okay, you got to look at it this way. Okay. Here's this, this is that, this is the, this is the landscape. These are the people in my life. These, this is, you know, this is good. This one's bad. This one's good. This one's bad. You know, in general, you have to kind of set the board up of what your reality is because it's on a stage anyway, you know, being watched by beings you can't see. So, you know, what are you going to do given that, given what reality is? What, how are you going to conduct yourself? And now three, the answer is, Okay, the answer to that, how are you going to conduct yourself? Well, like someone who knows, who sees through it, is how you're going to conduct yourself. Therefore, you're not going to be attached to too much. Because you realize the shifting nature of reality anyway. Whatever you're attached to will cause heartbreak. Okay, so you're going to lighten up so that you can be yourself in that situation where everyone else is losing their minds. But you're out there, you know, if, if you're out there, you might even be fairly joyous because you've detached. You've detached from all this. You've detached, you've attached, you've gone further into Christ, further into Jesus, but it's caused a lightness of the spirit. Meaning you don't really buy in so much to the earth. You're not really so concerned with what happens here. It's really got, got not a lot to do with you anyway. It's like when we get involved in politics, and we have been, you know, I have been because of uh, the Trump situation. And that's um, certainly exposed all this stuff, hasn't it? I mean, it's just, it's amazing that, uh, you know, Trump is, is, he is, I will agree with Pastor Manning, he is fairly apocalyptic in the sense that he has rendered and removed the veil so now we can see what we're dealing with. And it's quite a different world than most people thought. In fact, a lot of people can't deal with the new reality, that, 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 uh, the, 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 the new consciousness of what's come in here. And so they become Hillary Clinton or her, you know, I didn't realize this, but Hillary Clinton, it's interesting enough, she's a, she's a, she's a psychopath and a complete sociopath. And everyone knows it. And yet she's been allowed to function, you know, and even thrived. Uh, she worships Satan. She is a practicing witch. She is a spirit cooker. She's hanging out with, uh, you know, we've talked about this Gaga thing, Gaga. They're all connected, all these people, right? In their covens and their, 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 whole, their whole, you know, being is connected to the, all that stuff. And that all then connects to the child trafficking and the murdering of children. And it's just all part of parcel of this whole sick reality. So detaching, you know, and I'm not gonna go focus on them because that's not the issue with us. Right now, how can we cope with this? We cannot cope by simply sharing information to show how bad it is. I'm happy that uh, all these issues are out in the public consciousness, but the public can't deal with it. You see, the public is mainly deluded. The public is traumatized. The public has had mind control trauma techniques like 9-11 and things like that, you know, commercial TV, uh, you know, Hollywood and all that stuff. It's all fake, it's all bullshit, it, it just is. So now, you know, we have, you know, this, this, this person that wants to get through this, again, it's this sort of detachment, not accepting being a victim necessarily, but it's this, um, from seeing what it is, we don't need more articles to see what it is, right? We don't need to worry about other people, whether they're, whether they're saved or not saved, or they're doing this or they're doing that. That's all BS too. Because technically there are no other people anyway. I told you, they're like shifting sands. So now, what a, the focus has to come right back to us. What are we going to do? And the only answer is there has to be a detachment from taking it on the chin, from carrying you know, the whole reality on your shoulders. You don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. What we need to do is back off, okay? 
it is what it is, right? It's one big spirit cooking nightmare, okay? One big, it, it's, it's just like a nightmare uh, of the worst horror movie you ever saw. And there's, there's pretty much, that's the whole of it. Okay, so, but it's still just a TV show, right? It's still a simulation. Therefore, detaching makes a lot of sense. Not going, and I want to cure it. Even the Bible, you know, which is a great reference. The Bible says, basically, this whole thing has to be destroyed. The Lord will destroy it all. You know, ultimately, it's all going to be subsumed anyway. And, you know, and, and it's gotten to a, such a dark point that most of, you know, they talk about the swamp. They never, Trump never figured the swamp would be this global thing in every single town, you know, everywhere. He thought it was just D.C. or maybe, you know, wealthy people or Hollywood or, you know, royalty or something like that. But who knows what he thinks. But I mean, he probably felt it was like a lot of us did. It was kind of limited to certain groups and certain things that most middle America would never even know about. Now, of course, you understand that middle, middle America is knee deep in all this crap, I mean, neck deep in all this stuff, right? So see, that changes the perception. That changes the game board. Now, now you realize, oh, so most people are playing a double, some kind of mind game. You know, they're, they're playing a game. That's right. You can't believe them. There's always an ulterior motive. When you have the question, I wonder why so-and-so is talking to me. Well, that's a good question. The answer should be, well, I don't know. I just decided to. Well, what made you decide to? And then that could get to the truth. Like, well, I just had this feeling that I should communicate with you. Well, maybe then uh, that's coming from somewhere else that's trying to control both of us. See what I mean? And then oftentimes that's the case. So once you understand those basics of reality, that there's no reality about it, it's, there's nothing normal about this. It's a very abnormal situation here. Nothing normal at all about any of it. Then you realize it's just like the Zen in Zen. You know, the whole purpose of Zen, the whole purpose of Buddhism, for example, is to withdraw desire because desire is the, the root of all evil in Buddhism is desire, right? Because it attaches us to that which is not real and causes what? What's Buddhism's whole purpose? It's to end suffering, yes? Okay, they have discerned that suffering comes from desire and desire attaches us to things that we have little to no control over anyway. They're, so that, that adds up to a great deal of misery. And so the, the Buddhist is trying to get out of suffering to find a way to detach from the heaviness of this world, primarily because the world is an illusion anyway. So therefore, nothing to become attached about. No reason to attach. No reason for desires for, for the world. Because a desire for the world is, and what it really is, is it's, it's an unaddressed trauma within a human to somehow have the world like it. A human wants to be liked by the world. There's nothing that in the world that it has a capability of liking anyone. They like whoever is going to go corrupt, who's ever going to go their way, but they certainly don't like anyone. Like is not it. It's not even in the uh, the cosmos of the world. Like, like is not in the in the milieu of the world. Like is not the issue. Whether you're liked or not by the world is irrelevant since the world is illusory anyway. The only point is, you know, you're going to have to decide with yourself what you're going to do about it. There's no religion that will save you, you know, none. Um, you know, these people, God, I've run into this religious spirit, oh my God. It's really, there's two Jesus, you know, there's two Jesuses. There's, there's two Abrahams. There's two Bibles, apparently. There's the one for them and the one for, and the one for us. The one for me is completely... Mine is more like the kingdom is within you. You know what I mean? It's like there's no point in looking outside dates and different things and all this stuff. 
uh, signs and wonders. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, that might be good for some people. I don't really care. You know, and, and, and people say, well, you should care. It's like, should? You're not my friend. Get the hell out of here. Nobody shoulds me. Go, <laughs> go, should. go should yourself. Almost rhymes with shit yourself. Should yourself. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, take that and, you know, take that long walk off the short plank. Thank you very much. Why can I say that? Because that person, whoever that is, that wants to should you, is not really a person anyway. And, and if they walk off the plank, nobody died anyway. All of it is like that. It just try to get you to blink, to try to get you to buy in. And once you buy in, they can have their way with you. They can stalk the hell out of you. Because you still think everything is real. So they can just keep on going with that until they just do you in. If you want to win, and this is really truly being in Christ. What is Christ? Why would Jesus Christ be great for Buddhists? Da 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 <laughs> why would Jesus why would Jesus be the ultimate of you know, the, the pinnacle of Buddhism beyond beyond the Buddha what because in Christ without chanting the Bodhisattvas without going into deep meditation and asceticism and whatever else other mind games they want to play in Buddhism, without any of that crap, you're instantly detached. It's the instant solution. The way, the truth, and the life. The final, the final revelation of the mystery is that, you know, it's kind of like in a way you always had the power. You always had the life. You always had the glory. You always had everything. Nothing was lost. Nothing happened to you. You were never a victim. You know, every time you thought you were, it's because you bought in to something that wasn't true anyway. The world is a lie, but Jesus is truth. And Jesus is the ultimate detachment from what? What does Jesus detach us from? Anybody. The world, that's right. So everything we talked about here is resolved in Jesus because there's a great mystery there. The mystery cannot be resolved through words. It's a mystery that you know in your heart, but you cannot bring to, to speak. Closest thing I've seen of that is John 17. That's the closest to the revelation of the mystery that, that there is, that's available in any written form anywhere in the world of any wisdom that you would like to, that you would see. It, it is the actual legal positioning in Christ, which is God, God in you, I in him, him in me as one. Um, <clears throat> which much, there's much wisdom around the world that's like, it's like Om and all that. It's, it's like, you know, the Atman and the Brahman are, are equal in Hinduism and the Upanishads. There's a key to Hinduism. But I, I and the Father are one, Jesus and the Father are one. Therefore, I and Jesus and the Father are whatnot. I am one, too. I cannot be separate from I am. That truth is spoken. They spoke about Jesus in the Upanishads. It's called Atman equals Brahman. And that's, the, you know, that's that, that, that mystery again. Uh, there's, there's some truth in every religion, you know, but I mean, and then they're all false, though, ultimately, because all of them deal with man worship, you know. Pastor worship priest worship and then you know the, the Vatican is simply a pedophile network you know I'm sorry a child trafficking network uh, you know posing as a religion right some people said some one person said children are the are the commodity that's the, the, the that's what they deal with they become it becomes obsessed because it's kind of like the ultimate thing you shouldn't do Right? They, they can't stop themselves from doing it. And so they have like a club of people who, who've gone that far and they can't get out of it. And so they, they support each other in their evil. You know, and there's another saddest thing about that. They operate as a collective and they can't get away from each other either. 
They're just stuck in this curse and they can't get out. Say, so, well, Jesus could get them out. Can he? Can Jesus get them out? Or does one have to decide to get out and, you know, with the help of the Lord, et cetera, et cetera? How does Jesus get them out? Out of what? Most of these people, when they when they step out of things, they they have no testimony because if they did, they you know, they say that if you if you if you're if you're in these satanic circles or the, the quote Illuminati, which is whenever I hear Illuminati, that's always red flag suspect. Nobody in those groups says the word Illuminati ever. They only say it to the public to to fool the public. You know, what with their club is just way before the uh, Adam Y shops Illuminati. I can I can assure you, it goes back to the Greek mystery schools. It goes back beyond Pythagoras, and it goes back even further. Illuminati. What is this a choke? You'd have a class on the Illuminati now. Well, Benjamin Franklin is a big Illuminati member, and so is George Washington, and now all of them. Every Freemason is Illuminati. Okay, well, just keep on and going with all that. It goes nowhere. People teaching classes on that are idiots because they're wasting precious time. What they should be teaching, should, hear should, me shitting them, is something that can help the people. Go shit yourself. I'm going to shit myself. I mean, should myself. Uh, teach the people, um, you know. Say need. To, uh, to, to, to take care of themselves. Teach the people to get free on their own. Not come, you know, hang around me. I got nothing to say. I have nothing to, I can't help you. I can't save you. But if I can somehow influence you to take a look at yourself and realize you still have, you know, that's where the power is. Um, you know, to, to, to do all this stuff. That's, it's I've got to start with your free will. Uh, then that, then that sends it back to you with respect. In other words, you're, you're an equal to me. We both have to do the same thing in order to somehow detach from this horror movie of, of complete injustice and unfairness, which is why it's horror. And, uh, get the hell out of here. Even if we have to walk it out, walk around and all that, once you're free, then you're free to help other people at that point because it doesn't matter anymore. It's, you're, it's, it's done. You got to tell other people about it. He beat it. Uh, my worries are gone. It's, it's really, we need, we all want this. So when you see people like this, you know, there are people out there occasionally in our lives that just seem to be an other world. They seem to be detached from everything. Now, sometimes it's a game they're playing, trying to impress you. But let's say it's real. Don't tell me you don't want that for yourself. Of course you do. I do too. Oh boy, I need it. I don't just want it, I need it. If I'm going to attach to anything, it's going to be Christ. Because why? Because that mystery is something real, even if I can't resolve it, right? Right? very fluid thing in and out of time so because that's the detachment from the illusory delu the world of delusion and and most people that you run into they could have an opinion about this or that or the weather or the politics or whatever it is all of it's irrelevant it's completely irrelevant all the news events going on today are irrelevant all the politics going on today are irrelevant except for the fact that uh that there's this pushback the other way to try to bring in, you know, some justice. And you see how it's getting bogged down. I mean, you see how it's getting homogenized and it's getting kind of crunched up. So we, again, we have to detach to avoid the broken heart syndrome of, you know, gosh, we can't even do this. Gosh, we can't even do that. Now they're, they're, they're creating an army of, I guess this is the, uh, this would be the uh, uh, hysterically lame version of ISIS would be Antifa. And they're going to start shooting us and worry about that. All that comes from, you know, these, the oligarchs and these people you see every day on television. Um, you know, it's not like there's some, you know, there's some out of control thing. They, they, they're activated when they're told to be activated by people that are, 
just intent on uh, their nefarious evil around the world and uh, you know Sessions can't stop it Trump can't stop it you're you're it's going to come down to us we have to stop it well don't be where they are for one thing but if they ever start in like that uh yeah they there's going to be a a big divide in, in the world and uh, there's going to be people um you know using the anti for target practice let's face it there'll be probably lots of special ops and and, and black ops and you know Maybe the military will divide and attack itself. I don't know. You know, it's we're. They say, well, we're all divided. We are no more divided today than we have been from the beginning. We are the same division now as it was in the past. It's just that it's all come out in the open. That's the difference today than yesterday. There's the same divisions were still there, and they've always been there from the from day one. Cain and Abel, good and bad. Jacob and Esau. Uh, whatever uh, you know, the hybrids versus humans, um, and all that. They're wheeling out the UFO thing more and more. So that's that's another interesting thing that's going on in the background right now. That uh, that's going to distract a whole lot of people. And they'll be endlessly talking about that on coast to coast and all these shows. You know, it's a good place to get started coast to coast you know wondering about things that your world may not be what was presented to you in grade school and high school and college and uh, in your working life but um, the whole concept of the world the whole setup of the world the whole the whole thing of it is ultimately when you peel it back a nightmare that is not real understand not real is the main thing it's not real so to give it reality by buying in is a disservice to yourself. It's a disservice to this, the test that we're going through. It's a disservice to everything. I have some fairly cryptic lyrics in a, in a new song I did called uh, The Last Seal, but really, uh, cause I look about, I talk about it. It's, it's like a bunch of different voices. All It's just a process of coming to the truth, you know, different, different angles. And uh, basically, one of them is, uh, I, I need to know when I can stop looking out of my little shoebox. Well, shoebox is my metaphor for God. You know, for, for my metaphor for man and God, on our, for delusion and God, for the deluded and how they treat God. They put God in a little shoebox and they tell you everyone how to believe about it. And it's all bullshit. But, uh, the, so that sarcasm is there. I, I don't expect people to get it. The lyrics are very cryptic. And, and there's, unless I explain them to you, you wouldn't get them. Not that you care, but I mean, if you did care uh, about, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, the other thing is he, the people, they do care about, like, you know, they, they want to break down all these lyrics of, of, uh, of um, the people they're told to like. And uh, all I can say about all that is all that and being concerned about all that um, is like worshiping your military industrial complex. It's just not something that a normal person would do. Getting caught up in, you know, gossip and the entertainment, uh, you know, that they purvey, that they dish out to you through the TV sets and through the popular culture. It's completely to detach from. You know, some of the best musicians I have ever heard in my life were playing, just openly playing in a shopping mall. You know, so so please stop. Well, I can't stop you. I'll, I'll tell you what. I refuse to look at it. I'll do what I do, because I'm, a, like I say, a chef. I'm not that much of a, of a diner. I'm more of a chef. So I'm more, you know, having to create. Some people, they, they want to consume, and that's fine too. I, I, was, I was in that for a long time, but it's, usually it's either one or the other for me. It's not a blend. It's like I, I'll read a lot of books, and then, but when I'm writing one, I just kind of, that's what I do. I'm, I'm creating, I'm in that mode at that point. And then if I give that up, then I can go back to reading again. But it's either a chef or, it was Luke Besson that put it that way. It's, really great director, Luke Besson. He said, you're either a chef 
I forget how he put it, or a diner. You know, he was, he, this was an interview in French, in La Française, so you had to kind of like have a tra the translation wasn't that great. Um, talking about like who's his favorite movie makers and who inspired him and what are his influences. He was like, I'm my own influence. What are you talking about? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm the shutter. <coughs> I'm creating what I feel I need to create. And if I've been influenced by other people, it, that's fine, but I, he couldn't really, you know what I mean? He was like, that's not really a concept I go by. And it's like, I could really, uh, finally someone who's been honest, you know? Most people, they'll say influences to see if they could move their way up to the social ladder more. I find it disgusting, completely disgusting in every way. Detestable, disgusting in every way, shape, and form. You know, who's your influence? God is my influence. He, he, he inspires me to create something. You know, whatever it is. You know, well, what other influence do you... Well, look, look around. What do you mean, what other influences? There's a television set. There are billboards. There's the radio. What, what are you talking about? Everything needs to be filtered up in this cesspool. You know, and I, you know, whatever you consume, just realize this. Like, you know, I, I like I say, I like to read uh, spy novels sometimes, you know. I, I really like Vince Flynn, who died at a very early age. I just so big question mark there. And uh, Brad Thor can't write with shit. That guy can't write to save his life. But because he kind of imitates Tom Clancy and people like that, they, they, they still buy him. He's a, he's, he hates Trump to beat the band. So I'm, I'm kind of like, no wonder. You know, no wonder. <laughs> uh, but I like to, you know, and, and I don't know, I have to realize when I'm reading it that even if it's from someone I think is probably pretty cool, I still can't trust them because they set situations up you know, which are based on mind control, our agreed upon take on reality, you know, so it's fiction. So I have to detach from, the, you know, not get so emotionally, in, you know, kind of, well, for example, the CIA is great guys. This is the problem with, with uh, the CIA is nothing but heroes, right? The, the US military, the CIA and the military industrial complex, they're a bunch of great guys is how spy novels go, usually. Or, you know, Jason Bourne, the government is evil, but Jason Bourne is a hero. You know, from was that John Le Carre or was that uh, somebody, whatever, some writer. The government is evil. The most popular ones today are the government is evil. But I mean, when you see things like on TV, like 24 or some of these series, they have, they don't have it quite that way. Or the government is completely, either way, it's all BS. It's all fiction, either way. Whatever they say about reality is, is completely false. Mainly because they're not, they're not giving you the problem. The problem is us. What the heck are we gonna do about this situation? How are we going to finally heal Come into the present time and get rid of that delay. Get rid of the, the disease in our bodies. Finally, you know, detach and, and from things that aren't real. Yeah, it's getting on my nerves. The barking? Yeah. How are we going to... Uh, how are we going to put that... To, to rein all this stuff in so we understand that we are the problem, not the other guy over there. You know, other people, yes, I mean, you know, you're, you're helping them in the, the in Puerto Rico and helping people in your homes and different things. And yeah, that's, that's all fine. And you could do it much better if you could detach from. There's nothing wrong. It's just buying into this is something to be taken seriously and it just isn't I'm sorry but I take you seriously and I take 
myself seriously. I take myself more seriously than you because this is really all I got. This is all I can really be sure of. So I'll, I have to find a way to deal with this situation in myself. But then things will go much better in my interpersonal relationships because I won't be a burden, you see, because I will unburden myself. Uh, not, not like the Satanists, you know, for a moment here and there through their rituals, but through a permanent unburdening of the world called Jesus Christ. I will therefore detach. And if I am not detaching, if I, it's really heavy load here, then I have a problem and I must deal with it. Because nothing is worth throwing myself away for, for some other thing. And every time I focus on some other thing, then my self locus of myself becomes located inside the other thing. Suddenly my self isn't even with me anymore. It's over there in the thing I'm focusing on. No, that, that's, a, that, that's a recipe for misery. Total misery. Life could be fresh and new every day and you could just be as carefree as you could, well, what about all the people screaming in the world? Well, that's the other thing. You may not want to detach from the screaming because you may want to go down with that screaming. Look how awful it is and jump in yourself. But nobody ever got really saved by somebody when they're drowning uh, who jumps in there with them. They have to lower the basket down and pick the person up and pull it back up to the helicopter. Right? If the person just jumps in the soup with them, then whoever got saved from someone who's, 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 who's feels it so heavy that they jump in too. No, the person that's going to be most effective at saving people is going to be the one who's just basically in the moment with whatever they're doing with the basket without getting, putting on their shoulders the whole tragedy of the whole situation. Which can only come through faith, obviously. It need, there needs to be a supernatural deliverance from. And then people always accuse very spiritual people who have mastered this. They, they accuse them of being cold. They accuse them of being non-caring because it's not affecting them, like making them cut their wrist or whatever. They accuse them of not caring and being cold where they're the most effective person in the room for actually helping someone else. And, right, I rest my case. I rest my case. If you feel totally passionate about the injustice being done to so-and-so, then you've blown it. Because you ceased, you, you're going to have to deal with yourself later, I guess. If you deal from yourself, from that center point, then of course, um, you don't get caught up in someone else's stuff and someone else's something else and things that are not you. And then you can be much more effective that way, right? Much more level-headed, much more common sense. Because, you know, nothing new under the sun Nothing worth losing myself over and becoming someone else by hmm. worrying about them or worrying about this or worrying about that. You know, hence the news articles have a certain utility. But after a while, if they're causing us to lose ourselves, become absorbed in how evil everything is, then we forget that we eventually have to get back to being ourselves at some point which can never happen with all these negative news articles because you're always going to be over there somewhere. And so the misery piles up on our person almost as if a way to stamp us back and say, hey, look, uh, I'm here. You know, uh, we got to get together. We got to deal with this. What are we going to do? I'll be back in a while. I got to go deal with this now. I got to go deal with that now. You know, we're raising all these funds to stop these abortion doctors. We're going to put a stop to it. What, you're not compassionate? No, I'm compassionate. We're, we're working on it. 
I think I'll shoot me some abortion doctors. You? No, I'm not going to. I'm not a murderer. Yeah, I understand there's evil in the world. Oh, well, you don't feel passionate enough about those those kids. You know, the potential children. You just let them murder. No, I, I feel completely uh, fine. If that's your move, that's your move. It's got nothing to do with me. Don't try to convince me to do what you're doing to make you feel better about doing something you know is wrong in the first place. That is losing yourself into something else, into something else, into something else, and forgetting where you were. You can defeat a lot of the stuff that's that's happening. I mean, we started talking about spiritual warfare. I started complaining that, you know, there was a lot of blowback from doing this particular thing in, in some that's unpleasant, very unpleasant. Uh... That's because prayer is real. And the evils of the world are real. That's why you're praying about them. We, we, we're not without some remedy. But again, the person praying must be in control of themselves or in conscious, you know, state of being in themselves to effectively pray because it's all dependent on your faith which comes back to you, the individual. Uh, the way you can tell if you're doing well or not in all this whole regard is, you know, are you worrying? Are you afraid? Are you... Um... Well, those are the two big ones. Are you worrying and are you afraid? Worrying about the future, afraid about the present, uh, feeling like Stuck is another one. If you feel stuck and you can't move, uh, just none of that. I mean, yes, you can feel those things, but it's not based on, on actual reality. It's based on your emotions and your attachments to what you believe is a real reality. And that is, we, we all struggle with that because, you know, we're all, you know, I'm just saying it, even though I'm not exactly a great example of this either today, but I'm saying it for the record. Because uh, this is Christ. Yeah, this is wh where he wants to take us. He wants to take us right there, yes. You know, his yoke is easy, his burden is light, cast your cares upon him. Why do you think that that's there? Because he can handle that. You know, We don't have to, we can't. And unless you're like a child, children don't have a big burden on their shoulders usually. Uh, you know, that's what, that's it. It, it. You know, you you could say worrying about things makes you more compassionate, but um, I would say that it's just it, it, it. You could worry, but it makes people ineffective. I'd rather see someone that just kind of like, oh, okay, and, and just springs into action than just sits there worrying about it. Worry has no place. The the future is not certain. The past is not certain, you know, things that ha you think happen to you uh, or your cause and effect of how you piece together your whole life, like cause and effect, this happened because that happened because that happened because that happened. No, it's not my fault. Uh, even that's illusory. Even that is not really the real issue. So just taking, taking from the Eastern wisdom, the, the attachment and desire to the world is the cause of suffering. Amen to that. That is very true. You all your sleep, babe? Yes, I'm... I had been up all night because of, uh... Well, who knows why, but just having all kinds of things running through my head... And I'm not surprised after the 20 on 20, that's usually, you know, it's two days later, you know, I just feel like, you know, what I want out of this and what I prayed to God for was a relief of all this. Look, look, this is a word that came after praying about all this. It just was focused on this rather than, you know, politics or Satanist or, you know, pedo murderers or, you know, it's just focused on how can we, it's really, 
the age old question, how can we live? And the answer is Christ. Or if you like, the answer is detachment and the mystery of Christ is detachment. Well, then how can you be really good? It's the same analogy as the guy with the jumps off the helicopter into the water rather than using the basket to, to get the, the victim back up into the, the safety of the ship. You know, versus diving in himself and drowning along with the other guy. It's just, you know, it's, again, it's just, God is no respecter of person. What, what it is, is what it is. And, enough of that, we've come to the conclusion of that. I mean, that's, I don't know where that came from today. I guess it came from my praying and then I was inspired to that. So that's that. Okay, back to the geopolitical front. Um,